Hi everyone and welcome to another recipe video and today I'm making these crisp sweet Kree rose cookies also known as rosettes, beehive cookies or Kree loyang These biscuits are super popular in Malaysia around Chinese New Year and actually the word loyang means brass which refers to the brass end of this mould here which we're going to use to fry the cookies and what you do is you place this in really hot oil dip it into a batter and then put the whole thing after dipping into oil to fry it which makes the signature shape. So let's go! Full disclosure, you're going to need a couple of hours for this. Let's make the batter first. We're going to crack three eggs into a big pouring jug. We're going to give them a good whisk up. This batter is really easy to make by the way, it'll just take seconds and it's also really nice for thin waffles if you want to make Nordic style waffles. But once we've beaten the eggs up good and proper, we're going to add 400 millilitres of full fat coconut milk or thick coconut milk depending on how it's branded. Definitely do not use the light stuff, there's no point, you want it nice and rich. Set our wet ingredients aside and now we're going to stir our dry ingredients together. I've got 250 grams of rice flour and this is normal rice flour. To that I'm adding 100 grams of plain flour and the mixture will make it extra crispy and then I'm adding 200 grams of caster sugar. Finally, just a pinch of salt to bring out that flavour. Here I've used 250 grams of just rice flour, but in the past I have mixed it up and used part rice flour, part glutinous rice flour. As long as it's no more than a 50-50 split, then it's pretty much the same. To be honest, I think you could even get away with mixing just glutinous rice flour with that plain wheat flour. It's going to be deep fried, so it'll all be crispy in the end. Anyway, now we've mixed everything together, we're going to gradually stir in our wet ingredients. We're going to create a thick-ish batter, but not too thick, it's not going to leave a trail when you lift up the whisk. Do it slowly because you don't want to puff a cloud of flour going everywhere, which I've done way too many times, and it's such a pain in the butt to clean up. There are some recipes that use just rice flour without the wheat flour by the way, but I like adding the wheat flour in because it makes them extra brittle. I really like that snap. Right, that's the batter done. And because I'm feeling fancy, I'm actually going to flavour and colour half of it with pandan essence, so I'm splitting them equally between two bowls. You totally don't have to do this, but I'm making pandan kuiros here, so that is what we're doing today. Keeping one aside, just for keeping it plain flavour. Uh, doing a little bit of clean up here, because I am fussy about these things. And this is my favourite pandan piece, it's koipoi, koipoi, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. But it's my favourite brand because it's nice and thick and has a beautiful green colour. I'm just adding a little bit in this bowl here and giving it a good stir until it's evenly green. Look at how green that is. Now off to the side I've heated a big pan of vegetable oil. And to test that it's the right heat I've dipped a wooden chopstick in and straight away it started to bubble. Not too fiercely but you can see it's kind of fizzing and this is the perfect medium heat for frying. So I'm going to pop my mould in here for a couple of minutes to preheat. After two or three minutes I'm going to give it a really good shake and I'm going to dip it into one of the batters, not all the way down, just so it reaches just the top. Hold it for five seconds and now we want to hold it under the oil for 15 seconds. Make sure the mould is hovering above the bottom, don't plunge it straight down, you want to hold it right about in the middle because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. After about 15 to 20 seconds, 15 is enough for me, you want to give the mould a good old jiggle and the biscuit should easily come off the mould, just like this. Let's see that close up, give it a good shake, make sure there's no excess oil. And now we're going to plunge it straight into the batter and hold for 5 seconds. You can see it sizzle because it's so hot. And here I'm doing it in the pandan bowl. Then you're going to lift it straight up, don't jiggle it too much and then plunge straight into the oil, again not touching the bottom, hovering it around about the middle of the oil. Hold it for 15 seconds and I've just popped the sound on so you can hear that glorious sizzle. And once you get the hang of it you can do two or three at the same time, but do be careful because they fry really fast. I've just given it a jiggle and that was perfect. If you try and do too many in one go then your brass mould will start to cool down and that will cause the biscuits to stick. Don't worry if that happens, just use a toothpick to kind of gently poke out the cookie just like this and then make sure you preheat the mould thoroughly again. Once they start going golden brown, give them a gentle flip over to give them an even colouring. Just one more minute or two and then take them out and drain them on some paper towel. Be careful though because while they're still hot they still are a little bit soft so you don't want to bend and break them. And then you basically just have to do this over and over again until all of your batter is used up. And this will take one to two hours depending on how fast you are. 
You can only be so fast to be honest with a pan this size and one mould. I've seen some people do it with two moulds in one go in a big pan and they use one hand to dip, the other hand to hold and it's really impressive. I however just had the one and lack the coordination if I had to, even if I had two to be honest so this is what I'll make do with. Here's another great close up, I just love making these. It is tiring but it's so worth it, especially if you're only making them once a year for the Lunar New Year. I find a lot of Chinese New Year snacks are like this though, they're delicious but man they take hours to make. In fact next week I have another one and then I have another mini short that I'm going to show you too. And those also take a long time, I can't wait to show you though, they are delicious and like these absolutely worth the effort. And Chinese New Year is actually next week on Tuesday the 1st of February. This is why I'm ramping up my Chinese New Year cookie snack production. There's a lot of debate about where Kui Rose actually comes from. Some people say it is indeed from Southeast Asia, some people say it's from South India, some people say it's a Syrian snack but actually has a Dutch background. I don't know, wherever they're from, they're freaking delicious. And I love the idea of so many different cultures enjoying these biscuits over the centuries. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full recipe on my blog tashcakes.com and find me on Instagram as tashcakestastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more, give this video a like if you liked it to help other people find it, listen to the snap, comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular and I'll see you guys next time. Be good, be nice and have a good week.